quick review, right? In those trigonometry functions, we started off with which function this morning? Tan inverse. We decided to start there because we didn't have to do, we didn't have to fuss about with any pluses or minus and square roots when we were doing the proof for what this result was. What was that? It was 1 over? Not bad. You've learned a few things since, since then, at least I hope so. So it's still kicking around your brain. Thumbs up, okay? Um, and by the way, that 1 plus x squared in the denominator, it comes from 1 plus sec squared. That's actually what's going on there. Okay, that was tan inverse. Then we went on to sine, and we found that it was ever so slightly messier. We still used the same Pythagorean identity, but we ended up with a square root down here, right? What was underneath the square root? One minus Very good, 1 minus x squared. Now, those of you who were observant would have noticed that we didn't go through the whole process again to do this. And that's because if you're thinking carefully with me and you look at the picture, you'll see we don't need to. Remember, all we're interested in here is the gradient. Now, sine and cosine have a lot to do with each other. As we've already established, they're closely related. But sine inverse and cos inverse, when it comes to gradient, they have like a lot to do with each other. What, what can anyone tell me about the relationship between the gradients of these two functions? Any takers? You did observe this thing is always increasing. This thing is always de decreasing, right? Uh, you noted that at this spot here, when x equals 0, that gradient there, the tangent, should be gradient 1. What does that gradient look like? Right there. Minus, minus 1, right? Uh, still at x equals 0. So if I went dy on dx here equals negative 1, and dy on dx here equals positive 1, and then when you look at the rest of this, right, you're like, oh, you've got this um, vertical tangent here and here, vertical tangent here and here. These are kind of the same thing, but mirror images. Do you agree? Like, really, the gradient of this is the same as this, but upside down, right? So in fact, and this is why it wasn't worth going through like a whole different proof, it's the same thing, square root of 1 minus x squared, but we just slap a minus sign on the front. That's it. So it was not complicated. Hi. Who are you looking for? Um, so... Hmm. No, that's... that's it. Oh, sorry, this one. Uh, okay, sure. Iris. Is there anyone else? Iris? Um, could you come to the front office, please? I'm just checking to see if we missed anyone. That looks good. Yeah, all yours. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, this is all fine, right? We can just extend this just a little bit because we don't always get just vanilla old x there as the thing being sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse, right? So when we think about how we apply this with chain rule, let's suppose we have some arbitrary function in here. We actually did this exact one this morning. I think I gave you 5x minus 1 or 2 or 3 or something like that, right? How's it different? It's going to look very similar to this, but what kinds of things will we change? Yeah, go ahead. So 1 changes to f dash x. Okay, fantastic. So instead of 1 on the numerator, I differentiate in, in normal chain rule, I differentiate the inside, and that gives me this. And then I differentiate the outside, so it'll be 1 on 1 plus, but it won't just be x anymore. It'll be whatever that function happened to be, okay? So 1 plus, slightly messy, but f of x plus u, all squared, right? So in the situation we looked at before, it was a 5 on the top, that was our f dash, and a 5x minus 3 in the brackets. I mean, I know you could expand that, but there's not much gained out of expanding that, so we tend to just leave it there, okay? What do you think happens as we go to these? If I were to differentiate sine inverse of some function, again, how do you expect it to be different? F dash x on the top. And it's not because there's a, a fraction happening. It's because I'm multiplying by 1. So that's why you just get f dash by itself on the top. 
on the denominator. Still going to have all the same pieces that we had before. Square root, 1 minus f of x all squared. I'm so confident you get that. I'm not even going to write the last one because it's all the same with the minus sign at the front. Okay, done. Now where we are going to go later this lesson is not in this direction of differentiation, but we're going to get back out in integration. Okay, it's not as hard as it sounds. We really just need to learn to recognize when you start looking at these three. If I handed you those, could you climb back out and recognize which one is sine and which one is cos and which one is tan? Okay, obviously all of that just gets better with practice. So what do you need to do now? Get to work. <laughs>